Taylor Swift is on top of the world, but critics say she's done some sketchy things to get there. The country crooner turned pop star has forged a wildly successful career that's been boosted by her many high-profile feuds, legal battles, and endless innuendo. She's been accused of copying other artists, and yet she ferociously attacks others who might be riding her coattails. From her controversial view on feminism to her odd business arrangements, let's take a closer look at the shady side of Taylor Swift. The Other Side Swift has played coy about the inspiration behind some of her songs, but she's made it clear that many of her songs are inspired by her real-life relationships. I like writing songs about douchebags who cheat on me, but I'm not gonna say that. Swift's fans have had no trouble figuring out who each song's story is about, though, and some of her apparent muses have fired back. Musician John Mayer told Rolling Stone he was humiliated by Dear John. He said of the track, it made me feel terrible because I didn't deserve it. It was a really lousy thing for her to do. I never got an email. I never got a phone call. I was really caught off guard." Mayer also bit back at Swift's decision to commit her complaints to lyrics, saying, "...I think it's kind of cheap songwriting. I know she's the biggest thing in the world and I'm not trying to sink anybody's ship, but I think it's abusing your talent to rub your hands together and go, wait till he gets a load of this. That's bullsh**." Swift responded by telling Glamour that Mayer was being presumptuous about the track's inspiration, but he isn't the only ex who's bitten back at her very personal writing style. Joe Jonas also claimed Swift manipulated the facts regarding their breakup to drum up sympathy at the expense of his reputation. There's one that's about that guy, but uh -huh. that, that guy's not in my life anymore, unfortunately. Jonas responded to the backlash over her single 27-second phone call in a letter to fans, writing, for those who have expressed concern over the 27-second phone call I called Swift to discuss feelings, those feelings were obviously not well received. I did not end the conversation. Someone else did. Phone calls can only last as long as the person on the other end of the line is willing to talk. She might be known for her brutal breakup anthems, but the boys who inspired them are apparently unimpressed. Exaggerated excitement? When Taylor Swift first started collecting trophies for her music, her open-mouth shock face reaction to winning was endearing. After a while, though, she started to seem disingenuous with her gaping expression. The only time she seems genuinely shocked is when she loses to someone else. Remember the sneer she threw at Adele during the 2013 Golden Globes? Or her embarrassing reaction when Daft Punk beat her for Album of the Year at the 2014 Grammys? Swift candidly addressed the latter in an interview with Grammy Pro, saying, "...for a second, I kinda thought we had it. I remember not going to after parties. I went home and cried a little bit, and I got in and out Burger and ate a lot." That might sound a little dramatic, but that seems to be Swift's professional M.O. Crashing the Kennedys in July 2012, Swift was feeling 22, with the guy who just turned 18. Connor Kennedy, the grandson of Robert F. Kennedy, was barely of legal age when he started dating Taylor Swift. Despite some backlash about his age, Swift got invested in the relationship quick and even bought a beach house near the Kennedy family estate in Cape Cod. While the two were dating, she was also accused of crashing a family wedding with him against the family's wishes. Victoria Gifford Kennedy, mother of the bride, told the Boston Herald, "...Connor and Swift texted me an hour before the wedding and asked if they could come. I responded with a very very clear, please do not come. They came anyway. I personally went up to Miss Swift, whose entrance distracted the entire event, politely introduced myself to her and asked her as nicely as I could to leave. It was like talking to a ghost. She seemed to look right past me. Swift's camp denied the claims, but Today Show host Kathy Lee Gifford, who was at the wedding, insisted the incident happened exactly as Victoria described. Heartbreaker for all her scorned woman songs, Swift has allegedly broken at least two hearts to date, Calvin Harris and Tom Hiddleston. Swift and Harris split after more than a year of dating in early June 2016, and she and Hiddleston were spotted together just days later. What's more, Swift may have hooked up with Hiddleston before her relationship with Harris was even over. Swift first met Hiddleston at the 2016 Met Gala, and the two were spotted dancing together by party attendants. So the fact that the two became a romantic item within weeks had some people suspicious. The DJ himself was reportedly miffed when PDA photos of Swift and the Avengers star went viral right after he and Swift broke up. A source told E! Online, "...Calvin was very suspicious that Taylor was cheating during their relationship. He just didn't know with whom. He is so angry and feels betrayed. He is convinced that Taylor was cheating with Tom while they were still together." She then seemed to confirm the situation with her Reputation album single, Getaway Car, in which she sang the lyrics, "...I wanted to leave him. I needed a reason." For a woman who spent so much time on the receiving end of heartbreak, you'd think she might be a bit more considerate. And yet, she wasn't done punishing Calvin Harris just yet. Breaking her silence Shortly before Swift and Harris ended their relationship, he released the massive hit This Is What You Came For featuring Rihanna. But once they called it quits, Swift revealed that she used the Swedish pseudonym, Nils Sjöberg, in the credits to prevent the media from harping on the couple instead of the craft. When Harris was asked if he would collaborate with Swift, he remained true to their agreement and said, "...you know, we haven't even spoken about it." Yeah. 
I can't see it happening though. After the breakup, Swift's publicist released a statement notifying the world that Swift co-wrote the song. Evidently, she didn't want his parting gift from their split to be a smash hit that she got no credit for, while he continued to trash talk her subsequent relationship. To add insult to injury, more than a year later, Swift featured a gravestone of Nils Sjöberg in her music video for Look What You Made Me Do. If she wasn't petty before, well, this situation really brought it out of her. Lawsuit Happy in the fall of 2017, a blog called Popfront posted an essay criticizing Swift for not speaking out against white supremacists who view her as an Aryan icon. Variety reported that Swift's legal team contacted the blog's editor, demanding that the blog be removed and accusing the writer of defamation. The letter also claimed to be an official denouncement of white supremacy from Swift, but Swift's attorneys also demanded copyright protection to keep the letter private. The American Civil Liberties Union went on to publish the letter in its entirety, as well as a letter of its own that took subtle jabs at Swift's own song titles. Several other writers also tweeted about having to amend or remove stories Swift's teams found offensive. Swift's legal team is also apparently quick to threaten lawsuits if anyone so much as references her work. In February 2015, Swift's team threatened legal action against fans who used the phrase this sick beat on Etsy items. Then later that year, Allison Kilkenny, host of the Citizens Radio podcast, revealed on Twitter that Swift's team sent her a cease and desist letter after she discussed the song Wildest Dreams on air, even though the song was never even actually played on the show. Though Swift's copyright and trademark claims made major headlines, it's not a new thing. The Nashville Post reported that in 2009, Swift's merchandise enforcement team targeted 24 people who allegedly violated some of her unknown and unspecified trademarks. She won an injunction against 16 of the 24 defendants. Despite her insistence on protecting her own trademarks, though, Swift has been accused of disrespecting others' work with her own. Swift's music video for Delicate features Swift in a formal red carpet event, becoming invisible and then dancing around Los Angeles without abandon. Critics quickly noticed the dramatic similarities between this video and a 2016 Spike Jonze-directed ad for the fragrance Kenzo World. In that ad, actress Margaret Qualley dances and makes many of the same facial expressions as Swift, leaving a formal event to let loose on her own. Even the choreography is similar. Considering how lawsuit-happy her squad has been in the past, it's hard to believe her lawyers wouldn't have had a field day with that one if the situation was reversed. Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.